second lesson in this series of videos which will, pre will prepare you for your GCSE English Literature exam next year. Today's lesson provides context on what inspired Robert Stevenson's novella. We look at the dream he had, the real people who inspired the characters and the drugs which allowed him to complete the novella before his death. So let's start with the dream. Okay, so Stephen, Stevenson's novella is one of modern literature's most famous works. It has inspired numerous other works and has been adapted into film, television and other stories. It may come as a surprise then to learn that the inspiration for this great work came from a fever dream Stevenson's had during a particularly bad bout of consumption, which is tuberculosis. He was so enraptured with the dream, he was furious with his wife, Fanny, for waking him. When he was awoken, he could still remember the first few scenes, including the first transformation scene. Building on these sketches, he turned to the accounts of famous and historical people to flesh out what would become a masterpiece novel. So I'm just going to leave these notes on here for a few seconds, just so that you can copy them down. Okay, so the next thing I want to discuss is the inspiration for the character of Dr. Jekyll. So Dr. Jekyll was based on a real, a real life person. For the proper and professional character of Dr. Jekyll, Stevenson turned to William Brody, an infamous city councillor turned burglar from his hometown of Edinburgh. Brodie was a well-respected cabinet maker in the town, and as such had copies of keys for all of the richest homes in town. He quickly gave in to temptation and began to rob the homes in order to fund his secret second life, which included two mistresses, neither of whom knew each other, five children, and a gambling addiction. So again, I'll just leave those notes up there for you to copy down. Okay, so next we're going to do the same thing but with Mr Hyde. So Mr Hyde was again based on a real life person. Stevenson relied on accounts from Louis Vivet's, from Louis Vivet for inspiration in creating the monster alter ego of Mr Hyde. Vivet was one of the first people to be diagnosed with multiple personality disorder, known today as dissociative identity disorder. It's just there if you want to copy that down. He seemed to live with two very distinct personalities. One, a meek, intelligent and mild-mannered person who was disabled from the waist down. His other personality was a confrontational, arrogant and mean-spirited man who for some inexplicable reason could walk perfectly. Neither personality was aware of the other and Vivet had no recollection of one when he was personifying the other. So Vivet is the real person who influenced um, Mr Hyde. So Mr Hyde is the made up one and Louis Vivet is the real life person. Okay, I'll give you a few seconds to copy some notes down from that slide. All right then, so next we're going to look at the drugs which enabled um, Stevenson to complete his novella. Okay. So, given our modern day knowledge of medicine and treatments, it would be shocking to consider the treatment of tuberculosis, or consumption, with cocaine. But in the 1880s, that is precisely the course of treatment administered. Stevenson had long battled the disease and was convalescing, which means healing, 
at home with a prescription for cocaine to ease his bleeding lungs at the time he wrote what he considered his greatest work. It may be thanks to the drug-induced frenzy that Stevenson was able to complete this novel. So basically, without cocaine, it is unlikely that Stevenson would have lived to complete the novel. Give you a couple of minutes, couple of seconds to copy that down. Perfect. So let's move on to, to the last few slides. So Stevenson had long turned to his wife Fanny to review drafts of his work as he completed them. He valued her opinion above all and gave her the first draft of The Strange Case of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. Two accounts of what transpired next accompany the history of this novel. In the first draft, Fanny suggested that Stevenson missed the allegory of the story by simply using Hyde as a tool for the morally bad Jekyll. Stevenson was so insulted by the suggestion, he burnt the draft entirely. In the second draft, it was Fanny who burnt the draft as Stevenson was writing, believing it to be nothing more than a fever-ridden nonsense. By either account, it would seem that the first draft was destroyed. Okay, so let's move on to the second draft then. Just after you copy these notes down. Okay. Lovely. So after the destruction of the first draft, Stevenson set to working on the second draft. It is said that he completed this feat of extra extraordinary writing in a matter of a few days, which is quite remarkable when you consider the effort and concentration needed to handwrite um, a 30,000 or so uh, novella. So basically what you need to take from this is that he completed the whole novel in basically just a few days. Here's a summary for you. Give you some seconds to write that down. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for listening. Um, and I can't wait to see the work that you produce from the tasks that I have set you today. So thanks.